You know, the point is, Antonio changed the face of fashion because he mm. took street beauty yeah. into high fashion yeah. because he was so connected to this amazing energy. He put people on pedestals. Antonio Lopez was a fashion illustrator whose work appeared in publications such as Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Elle and Interview. His style evoked sexuality, movement and freedom through the 60s, 70s and 80s. Our story on At Leisure starts with Antonio Lopez because of his vision of what beauty should look like in the 1970s. As you will see, at a time when high fashion wasn't very much preoccupied with sportswear, his illustrations made it more popular than ever. Clothing designed only for sporting activities started well before that, in the 1920s. The first trousers for women were created for bicycling and mountaineering. This was considered a revolution back then, as women's clothes were something that required a lot of layers and sometimes one or two more maids to be put on. Coco Chanel was one of the first to create clothes for women that could be put on without much fuss. One of her first sports collection was inspired by the tennis culture originating in Paris. Fashion evolved for other sports during this time period. One of the most notable advancements in active wear was Suzanne Lenglen, who competed in a short white tennis skirt at Wimbledon in 1922. Instead of a hat, which was the tradition at that time, she went with a headband to hold back her hair. This created an uproar through the patriarchal society of that time. Things got downright scandalous in 1932 when Alice Marble appeared on the tennis court wearing tennis shorts. And here lies one of the most important aspects of how athleisure became so popular with both women and men in today's world. The androgynous nature of sportswear makes it a playground for fashion designers with a wish to break the traditional boundaries between the male and female dress. Athleisure has given women a tool of self-expression and freedom in a sector mostly dominated by men. Take Gertrude Ederle, for example. In 1930, Gertrude was the first woman to cross the British Channel in a swimsuit she designed herself that looked similar to the tank-style swimsuit of today. In the 40s and 50s, the technical advancements in fabric design and manufacture borrowed from the Second World War brought nylon to the attention of fashion designers. The production of synthetic fibers led to the mass production of active wear designed for particular sports, including weather-resistant clothing and concealed pockets and hoods. Most notable designs of that age include Bonnie Cashin, Claire McCardell and Vera Maxwell. These American designers made functionality a statement of style by producing easy-fit, loosely constructed clothing from fabrics such as wool, denim and calico. As you can see, by the end of the 60s, sport was still something that was an indoor, private activity. However, that was all about to change. Three factors were about to improve the fate of athleisure forever. The rapid growth of TV entertainment combined with better advertising and the sexual revolution of those years brought sports into the streets in the form of the tracksuit. These tracksuits were made out of cotton, polyester, terry cloth or a mix of materials. Being healthy meant being sexy, and the fashion world knew this thanks to Antonio's Lopez designs. Antonio was impartial to both women and men models. What he was partial to, though, was how he represented them. His drawings were not trying to convey reality. His designs brought in a look where beautiful physiques, joy of movement and innate energy translated into sporty clothes. Chances are that without his influence, sportswear would not have risen to the levels that followed his untimely death. 
Being sporty equaled sexy, as Antonio Lopez rightly intuited, and so the pop culture of the late 90s further popularized this look in fashion, most notably in the rising success of music videos of that time. Since 2006, leading fashion designers started creating tracksuits for the athletes of various Olympic teams, most notably Ralph Lauren for the US and Stella McCartney for the British Olympic team. In most recent times, we have seen the continual rise of athleisure due to yoga. Signaling our health to others through sporty fashion looks was not enough. Mindfulness becomes part of the equation, and so yoga pants begin to be seen not only on the streets but in offices as part of the creative attire. After all, if you worked hard enough to get in shape, why hide it? Designers took note of the rising trend in yoga activities and so companies like Nike, Adidas and others started paying serious attention to yoga pants. This rising trend also created new players in the athleisure market, like Lululemon, Fabletics or Athleta. In 2016, the US athleisure market alone reported $46 billion in sales. Globally, athleisure will be a $350 billion market by 2020. With athleisure sales reaching almost 24% of all apparel sales, you will be inclined to believe that the US is inhabited by part-time athletes. In reality, these growing numbers attest to the fact that fast fashion and classical fashion brands alike have understood the need for comfort and health signaling. Brands are now pushing for the market to increase in all sides of everyday life. I'm not one to disclaim the benefits of comfortable clothes, but let's see at what cost is the world embracing at leisure. The topic of sustainability in athleisure has been intensely debated over the past 10 years. Besides the environmental implications, the main issues are the promise of increased performance, moisture-wicking properties and odor-reducing benefits. Ingun Klepp and her team of researchers at the Norwegian National Institute for Consumer Research have compared odor control fabrics to traditional sportswear fabrics like wool, cotton and polyester. Their tests showed that not only these so-called new and high-tech materials underperform when compared to natural fibers, but they have harmful side effects for the person wearing them. According to The Guardian, public health advocates like Greenpeace and European regulatory bodies that oversee chemical safety are becoming increasingly concerned by the evidence that shows a possible link between sportswear and health issues such as cancer, obesity and developmental disabilities. Sweat and friction can also increase absorption of these chemicals into the body. Research has found high levels of phthalates, a group of plasticizing chemicals, dimethylformamide, a solvent linked to cancer and birth defects, and nonifenol ethoxylates, which degrade into hormone-disrupting chemicals that persist in the environment. Since the research came out, only a few athleisure companies have reduced or banned the use of these harmful chemicals. Adidas and Puma have managed to reduce them by 99%. Nike, unfortunately, didn't do much. This is because the European Union standards keep the local industry regulated, while in the US this isn't so. As the US is one of their biggest profit providers, Nike still doesn't see the advantage of offering customers a safe, healthy way to work out. The same can be said for fast fashion brands. Now that we got the personal hazards of athleisure sorted out, let's see what these materials do to the environment once discarded. Nylon, Orlan, Lycra, Terulene, Tactile, Neoprene, Elastane Fiber or Spandex are not natural materials. 
They are man-made through the use of plastics and chemically synthesized rubber. The Norwegian National Institute for Consumer Research has found that although these materials are advertised as water-saving because you will not have to wash them so often, that is not the case. People still wash their athletic garments more often than needed, wasting water and releasing harmful plastic microfibers in our rivers and oceans. Another harmful aspect of this materials is that it takes hundreds of years for them to biodegrade, ending up in landfills and leaking harmful chemicals into the soil and surrounding water sources. The production of these materials is just as dangerous to the environment, workers and biosphere. A lack of regulation combined with the booming athletic fashion market is the perfect scenario for small and big corporations alike to make a quick profit at the cost of our health and collective future. So if there is no difference in performance between plastic-based materials and natural ones, what are the more sustainable, healthier options? One of the best materials you could go for in that leisure is hemp. Hemp is breathable, natural, antibacterial and UV resistant. When looking at swimwear, one of the best alternatives is Econil. Econil is regenerated nylon that has been created from recycled ocean plastic. Besides reducing ocean plastic waste, this material doesn't shed so much microplastic as traditional nylon. It's not the best option, but it's better than what is currently sold in fast fashion stores. If you are in the market for new athleisure apparel, please consider buying a specific material, not a specific brand. It's the safest way to choose for your own health and the health of the planet. Now that we know how at leisure became so cool and how it's made, let's take a look at what we can do right now to wear it for good. And my first advice is not to get defensive about your past purchases. We all grow and learn as we go along, myself included. So there is no point of feeling guilty or sad about what you've already spent your money on. And since we're talking about clothes that come in direct contact with our skin, washing at leisure in a way that lasts you longer is a little bit different when compared to other clothes. Here are some tips. Warm water and faster machine cycles can both damage the materials, so avoid them at all costs. I know it's a no-brainer that the dirty surface on your workout clothes is on the inside, but it's important to turn your gym wear inside out before washing. There are a couple of brands out there that provide washing bags. Goopy bags come to mind. These bags catch plastic microfibers from being released into the water supply. Softeners leave a residue on the fabrics which can attract bacteria, while bleaching agents reduce the material's elasticity by oxidizing the spandex fibers. Since these stretchy synthetic materials don't do well under heat, it's best to hang them to dry instead of machine drying them. If you must buy a new pair of yoga pants, swimsuits or athleisure, please consider purchasing from a sustainable brand. You will do good for the environment, workforce and of course for yourself. Before you go, I have some questions for you. How often do you wear your athletic clothes? And also, how did you make your favorite piece last so long? Let's discuss it in the comments and learn from each other. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting and useful. And if you did, please don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.